Hey guys, it's Ryan, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on creating 3D text in Blender, rendering it onto a transparent background so that you can use it in as a layer in your compositions. Um, we're starting here with Blender 2.74. I'm just going to press Escape to uh, clear the startup screen. Now I'm going to be going along um, at a basically describing pace for someone that would be might be an intermediate user of Blender. Um, but just to assist anyone that would be new to Blender, um, I've turned on screencast keys so you can see which mouse button I'm pressing as I press it. And uh, as well, if I type any keys on the keyboard, they'll show up down here. Um, as well, I, with the blog post associated with this video, um, I'll have a kind of a step-by-step -step instruction PDF download that you can download um, if you need to follow uh, the steps um, you know, you want something to follow along with that you can print out or uh, have on a second monitor as you go through this exercise uh, on your own time. So um, this is the main 3D viewport in Blender. Um, we have three objects present. Um, one is the cube object, this one is a light, and this one is a camera object. Now when you select objects in Blender, you right click them to select. So I can go hover over any of these objects and right click and it'll select it. Um, if you happen to left click, you'll see that this little target, and this is your uh, main cursor, and it usually sits at zero, zero underneath this cube. Um, often we use the target um, to pivot around in some cases. So um, what you want to do is if you ever want to reset this um, target, you press shift C, and what it'll do is it'll snap the target back to the center and zoom out so you can see all the objects in your scene. Okay, so now um, we're actually not going to need the cube in this exercise, so I'm going to right click it to select it, and then I'm going to press delete, and when the menu pops up, I'm going to left click on the word delete, and the cube is deleted. So now I want to add my text, so I'm going to go to add, and then select text from the menu. And as you can see, as if I, if I uh, orbit around here, um, that the text is kind of um, laying flat along the x-axis. So I'm actually looking at it from the top right now. Um, on your numeric keypad, um, a lot of these numbers on the keypad here correspond to different camera views, which can be seen up here. So we're in user perspective because we're kind of free camming around. Um, but if I want to look at it from the front, I'm going to press 1 on my numeric keypad. And you can see it's pretty much the um, angle we saw it um, appear in originally. But if I want to look at it from the exact top, I'm going to press 7. And now I'm looking at it from the top. And this is probably the best view um, for us to uh, see the text while we're working with it. So I'm just going to pan around a little bit and zoom in using my center scroll wheel and shift and pressing my center scroll, scroll wheel to, uh, to pan around. The object is in object mode right now. So from this menu, I'm going to pick edit mode. And I'm going to press backspace on my keyboard to remove that word, uh, remove the word text. Uh, for this exercise, I'm going to, uh, we'll use the word sale. And I'm, oh, my caps lock us on, there we go. Sale, in all caps, um, for this exercise. I'm going to switch it back into object mode because I've added my words. And here, in the properties panel, you're going to see a uh, F. Um, I'm going to assume it's the object data tab, but because the data type is text, um, it's an app representing fonts. Um, you can rename the object here if you want, but I'm not going to bother right now. I am going to change the font just to something a little bit different, just to show that you can. So I'm next to the regular on the font tab, next to regular, I'm going to pick the open. And I actually have saved a uh, public domain font called Bully. I think I downloaded it from Da Font. And I'm going to press open. And you can see my font updated to match that font. Um, and you could, you can assign faults for, for bold and, and other variations as well. Um, but I typically I'm using one font in a project, so um, I only ever really set the regular. Um, so now, if I click my middle mouse button and cam around, see, we can see that it's still flat. So what I want to do is I actually want to um, rotate it so that it's standing up again. So with it selected, I'm going to right click, touch R for rotate, X for the X axis, and 90. So now if I press 1 on my numeric keypad to look at the front view, and I'm going to have to scroll out a little bit or pan around to center it again. Now, when I cam around, I can see that it's very thin. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to choose this item here. I'm going to go extrude, and I'm just going to click on the arrow a little bit. And you can see that the text gets thicker. 
And just to save time, I'm going to set it manually on my numeric keypad, 0 0.1. And that made the text fairly thick. So now we really have blocky 3D text to work with. Now, when we take a picture of this, um, we can basically, uh, I'm using my center mouse button and moving my mouse left and right to camera around, we can find the right angle. So, you know, if depending on your composition, right, like something like this, that looks pretty, you know, large and something like this, so, you know, it's got a different mood to it, right? So I'm going to go with this large one, the bright one. And uh, this is the basic camera angle that I want. So because I'm in user perspective view right now, it's like kind of like a custom camera. So what I want to do is snap the camera object, the main camera object, um, to my position. Um, one thing I am going to do is I'm actually going to use my scroll, uh, scroll mouse and I'm going to scroll out one. I typically find the camera goes to the front of where I am. And because the object itself has depth, I believe um, uh, it um, creates a larger distance. Another thing I'm going to do is press five on my numeric keypad. And what that's going to do is it actually is going to put me into ortho view. So now I may actually want to adjust adjust my my image a little bit because I'm an ortho. It gives you it's it's like a non perspective view. The uh, your sense sense of depth is a little bit different, and I can kind of see the horizon there. So that's dead on, but let's come up a little bit around there. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with that um, right there. I'm going to zoom out one and now I'm going to press Control, Alt and zero on my numpad. And this shows me um, the view that my camera created. So I told you that I zoomed out a little bit. I'm actually going to do it again uh, and zoom out a little bit more and maybe push the text a little bit to the left. So I'm going to use my middle mouse button and click and then you can see that the camera is like right on top of the text there, even though I was at about this spot. So I'm going to pick a spot again that I like. That's probably going to look pretty much bang on with this X here. I'm going to come out two times and again I'm going to press Control Alt 0 and now my text is fitting in the frame. It could probably still come a little bit left again so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to hold Shift and click my middle mouse button and just move it to the left a little bit and again Control Alt 0 and there it is pretty close to center. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I have my framing right. So what I want to do is preview what my render is going to look like. So I'm going to press F12. And as you can see, it's rendered my text, but I don't see the same highlight um, that I did in the preview uh, window, which uses world lighting and the render is using the actual lighting. So I have to, we have, what we have to do now is make use of the light that we had in the scene. And as you can see, it's actually above and behind it, I believe. So you can see that it's casting the light to the back of the text, whereas we want to move it to the front, so it casts the light to the front. So what I'm going to do is click my middle mouse button and pivot out. So the camera's in an okay place. And again, we said that the light was above and behind the object, which it appears to be. I'm going to right click to select my light. And you can see that it's got these axes handles on them. The uh, green is the Y axis. The red is the um, X axis and blue is the Z axis, which brings us closer to our item. So first I'm going to bring uh, the light down and then I'm going to look from the top and I'm going to bring it in front and then grab it by the red handle and drag. So now it's going to be to the front of that text but slightly up and just to the left. So now I'm going to press F12 to check my render again and now you can see um, that uh, you know the light is coming from the top left. Now I actually see I'm going to see if I can get rid of this triangle here. So I'm going to bring it down a little bit and press F12 and it's uh, almost gone. I'd say that that's probably close enough. Um, so I've got okay lighting in this scene. Now you can do three point lighting which means that you, you can if you have this light selected and you press duplicate it'll create a second copy of a light of the light for you. You can also adjust its some um, settings here 0.5 let's say so that lights a little bit dimmer so now if I press F12 to render you can see that there's a bit of a backlight coming in from the other side, but it's not quite reaching over here. So you can add other lights to the scene and, uh, and see the different lighting effects you can get. But we're just going to stick with the one light for this. 
Now, if I press F12 again, this is just black and white, which is fine if you if you want your item to be black and white, but you can also add color at this stage. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select um, our sale text and um, I'm going to right click it to select it. And then I'm going to go here to the materials tab. And what we're going to do is basically we're adding like a, a materials layer on top of this text. I'm going to press new and I'm just going to click in here, rename it to matte color. And the diffuse layer is basically your color layer and the specular layer is your highlight layer. So I'm going to just crank the intensity up to one. Let's choose a color. I'm going to pick a tealy blue color somewhere around there, but nope. I'm going to turn the darkness down. And you know what? That's not a very good sale color. So you know what? We'll do something else. We'll do it red. The sales are always in red, right? Fire sale, that kind of thing. And I'm actually going to brighten it up a bit. Okay. So now we can see in this view here that um, that our, uh, our text is red. If I press zero on the numpad, you resume the uh, main camera position so I can see that my text is now red. I'm going to press F12 to render and now my text is red and very shiny for my lamp. So I'm going to go back here back to the 3D view and um, the one other thing, oh actually you know, we can look at the render for this. One thing to note is that this background here is a gray color. It's basically like the world color or the sky color within Blender. So I'm going to go back to 3D view and I'm going to go to the, sorry I'm just going to remember where it is. I think it might be on the end panel. No, it's the shading panel. So we're in the properties panel, render tab, under the shading sub panel, you're going to see this alpha and you're going to change it from sky to transparent. There's a second spot that you might want to check. It's usually like this by default, but under output, you want to make sure that RGBA A standing for alpha is the item selected. So now when I press F12 to render, I have the text, but as you can see by the checkerboard, it's on a transparent background. Um, this makes it a lot easier for us to render. So let's say that I'm happy with the lighting on this image and this is my final image. I'm going to go to the image menu, save as image, I'm just going to drop it on my desktop and I'm going to call it sale text dot png and you can see here that the file name is png and that RGBA is selected. I'm going to press save as image and now that image is saved as a PNG on my desktop and um, and I can load it up in uh, Photoshop or another program. Um, another thing to mention is that if you think you might want to go back and edit this later, you can go to File, Save As and save the Blender file. So if you decide that once you get in your composition that you really want it turned a little bit more or that the color is too dark, you can come back into this file and make those adjustments and really customize your 3D text to look exactly the way you want it to. So that's it for this um, part of the tutorial, um, or this tutorial period, I think it's done now. Um, if you would like to hear more tutorials from me or with um, different um, softwares like Blender, a little bit of ZBrush, um, all of the Adobe Creative, uh, creative uh, Suite, um, please check out my blog at ryan.ca. I'm hoping to bring you more um, uh, walkthroughs like this in the future. Thanks and have a great day.